Um, why do you think people are such huge fans of The Incredibles? Uh, I think that it's primarily about a family more than it's about superheroes. They just happen to be superheroes. And I think that everyone kind of relates to that. Um, can you describe the blending of the fantastic and the mundane that happens in this film? Well, that was a core idea from the first film, that you don't do one without doing the other. And uh, uh, that's, I think, part of what makes it relatable is I always loved when I was a kid, uh, I, I was a big fan of Walt Disney's work. And uh, they did a version of Cinderella where the fairy godmother comes out with her wand and she starts to do it and then looks at it and has to whap it a few times to get the pixie dust coming out of it like it's a clogged pen. <laughs> I love that because it made magic seem every day and like just as as uh, it doesn't work all the time just like reality. Yeah. And any time that blend happens, I'm in. It's like I loved when Han Solo got in the millennium in the Millennium Falcon, which goes faster than light, and starts it up and it kind of goes and he has to hit the side to get it to work. <laughs> that I understand. And so we try to do that with superheroes. Yeah, and the superheroes in this film, their powers are an extension of who they are, who, who their personality is. And um, which part of their life they're in. And what part of their life they're in. And even our new superheroes have powers that are kind of an extension of who they are in some cases. So I think that makes it more fun. And what, um, what do you think is the core of this film? The core of this film? I think that parenting is an act of heroism. Mm. It's really hard to be a parent. It's, a lot, it's hard to do the right thing, but especially as a parent, you have, to, you have to stretch. You have to push yourself through exhaustion to do the right thing, and I think that's the, the core message. And not all superheroes are up to that. Uh, agreed. <laughs> <laughs> agreed, agreed. And speaking of parenting, uh, how, What's your take on Helen and what she has to go through to decide to, you know, to leave the family and go into the, the super well, I life think again? Helen uh, makes a choice to go out and support her family. They need her to go out there and make some money, and they also need her to make uh, uh, supers legal again. She wants her kids to be fully realized as supers in the world. She wants her family to be able to live out in the open again. So she takes the assignment. As hard as it is to leave her family, she's got to take that assignment to make the world this a better place. This makes it sound very well-meaning and good for you <laughs> like broccoli. It's actually a lot of fun, okay? Yes. Big tubs of popcorn, giant sodas. <laughs> Just get everybody in with multiple straws and hands and enjoy summer. That's what this is about. Yeah, uh, several people have said w w there'll be a question at the end about what do you expect people to take out, uh, you know, take with them when they leave this film. They've all said joy, just joy and fun. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that y your your message is hitting home. With but you everybody. get you get some broccoli along the way. You're going to be healthy too. Yes, <laughs> it's hidden <laughs> in the popcorn. Bro you never broccoli popcorn, it. like the broccoli pizza. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> you, it's ground up to, to a subatomic level. You'll never taste <laughs> You'll it. You'll never even taste know you like got the it. best popcorn you've ever had. <laughs> perfect, perfect. And uh, I don't write these questions I just ask them they get, uh -huh. so uh -oh. don't you know uh, what we take no responsibility for our answers perfect perfect so um, uh, the question is uh, Bob is such a good dad why does he struggle at first why does any dad struggle at first yeah. why did I go through all the pain uh, it's because you don't know what you're doing and and uh, you know I had these uh, when I was first a parent I had all these quaint bachelory notions of Oh, well, it'll be no problem. And, and you know, uh, the first time I solved a problem and it worked and the kid went to bed happy, I thought, I'm a fine dad now and <laughs> I'm done, right? And it's like, no, the next morning you have to be a fine dad again. And yeah. again and again and again. It's actually yeah. really hard. The problems change every day. Yeah. Every day. Just when you think you got it, it changes. Yeah. Um, so you had mentioned that uh, people's powers, a lot of the the um, the supers' powers are uh, attached to personalities. Yeah, it's or an extension, extension of who they are. And, and with their role in the family. Uh, so how does that relate to Jack-Jack? Jack-Jack, uh, babies are uh, unexplored potential. They, they might be the next uh, uh, leader of the free world or the curer of cancer, or they might be the bag man that shouts on the corner about socialism. Uh, you know, you just don't have any idea what they're going to be. And they can be, there's a window where they can be almost anything. And so they're uh, unexplored, unrealized potential and or not. You know, you don't know. And that's what babies are to me anyway. They're roll the dice and see what happens. 
Uh, baby, babies have parents. Holly Hunter and Craig T. Nelson bring those parents to life. Uh, what What about their voices? Uh, did you guys? Oh, I I love Craig T. Nelson's delivery because he he has this great mix of being of str strength and bravado and vulnerability and cluelessness. <laughs> well, what's funny is uh, when I, we were talking about the character on the first film. People were asking, you know, who are you going to get for a voice? And I said, I don't know. I said, he's kind of a Craig T. Nelson kind of guy. <laughs> you know Craig T. Nelson, how he seems like he played sports, but he's also your best pal from next door? <laughs> you know, and, uh, you know, and finally, it, like, dawned on us, maybe we should get Craig T. Nelson, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and so, uh, you know, he's the perfect uh, Bob, Mr. Incredible, and Holly's the perfect Elastigirl, mm -hmm. and it goes down the line. Uh, you know, Sam Jackson was my first choice for Frozone, and and uh, every uh, everyone, Sarah Vowell, Sarah Sarah Vowell I heard her on the Violet. radio and thought, that's Violet. And uh, so just every single one. We have Katherine Keener and Bob Odenkirk in, in yeah. the new film and Sam Jackson, I mentioned. And Sophia Bush as our new Void. Void, character. yeah. The, our voice awesome. cast is, is really great. And, and, and Dash, our new Dash. You know, Spencer Fox was Dash in the first the, movie and he grew up. Yep. So. Yeah, he's in his 20s now, so he was the only member of the family we had to recast. And we thought, we're never going to find somebody mm -hmm. as good as Spencer. And then we found Huckleberry Milner. Uh, and he's amazing. He's just as good as Spencer, and and uh, just as full of juice. Yeah. You know, it, it, you know, you kind of have to. Uh, the, you almost need a gerbil wheel for both Spencer <laughs> and Huck because they have so much energy, which is perfect for the character. Um, the look of the film is iconic. Can you go into a little detail about? What it's kind film? of an alternate version, uh, a future alternate futuristic version of the '60s early 60s. That's sort of what it is. Um, we break the rules and have technology that they didn't have in, at that time, but we're never going to have cell phones because then you wind up with a bunch of scenes of people doing this, and we have enough of that already, I think. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the relationship between uh, uh, the score, Michael's always beautiful scores that he provides for you guys. Well, the first Incredibles was Michael's first score for movies. Oh, wow. And so uh, I was really happy to, um, you know, have our film be the first one that used him. Um, I was struck when we were looking for composers and I started getting CDs in from everywhere uh, that Michael's were the most versatile. Um, he had done video game scores and, and he had done television. He had done Alias for television. And uh, he was able to do World War II. He could do uh, old 20s sound. He could do a space opera. He could do um, classical, every single kind of jazz, every single kind of thing he had. Uh, it, was, it was like he was able to speak multiple languages. And that was, as a storyteller, that was perfect for me because I want to do a lot of different kind of movies. And I hope to God he's there for every single one because I love working with him. And just to add that you two have an amazing relationship. I mean, these guys have a shorthand and they have a lot of fun doing yeah, work yeah. together. So. I always feel like I'm knocking on the door of the neighbors going, can Michael come out and play? <laughs> and, then, and then he comes out and we go, you know. <laughs> Running off. What do you want audiences to take away from when they see this film? A uh, lot of fun. <laughs> yes. If they have something to chew on, that's great. But really, it's it's popcorn and cola, summer at the movies. Find the biggest screen you can find, the best <laughs> sound system. Don't give business to the other guys. Find the best. That's the way to see the movie. With strangers in the dark, uninterrupted, no pause button, no <laughs> taken sending text. Concentrate on the movie and enjoy the experience. That is all. Boom.